Well, viewers out there, good evening once again. I'm coming your way through Majesty Christian Television Network. I am your friend. My name is Apostle Helen Rudokeno of River Supply Bible Church. And I'm so excited each time God gives us the life and gives us the privilege to come through this channel, to your homes, to your offices, to your kitchens, to uh, your party places. Or those of you who are walking on the street, maybe you are with your iPhone, your smartphones, your Blackberry, and then you just want to hear the word of God. And somehow along the line, you are just listening. I just thank God for your life. You are awesome and I love you. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, it is a blessing to come through this channel once again to speak your word. I pray that through this word, you will perform your miracles, you will draw people close to you, and that those who are not saved shall become saved. Be glorified, Holy Father. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you to this awesome month, wonderful month, a month of revelation. You know, you look down the line, you counted January, and now it's November. Then we are wondering, it's just one more, one more month for the year to end. And sometimes people begin to feel nervous because they've been building and building and building since January till now. But if you ask them what they have built up, they can't see it. You know, it can give people some puzzle. And there are some who have begun to build, but somehow along the line, what they were building got damaged. Some, somehow it was wrecked up, even unplanned. Something wrecked them, like those who we saw a few days ago, the tsunami that came, the hurricane Sandy, that have destroyed a lot now in America. Is it not that these people built? They spend money to do all of those things. But look at them today, being embarrassed. Some are homeless. Some do not know what to do anymore because something has gone wrong somewhere. But hear ye and hear ye the word of the Lord. God is going to do something in your life. I don't know what you have been building and somehow along the line it has come to a wreck. I don't know what you have been building and somehow you've not been able to complete it. I don't know what you've been building and down the line you become so confused. You don't know what next to do. I want you to put your trust and confidence in God. Some of you have begun to build and then you are becoming already afraid because those who started building with you, they have accomplished their building. Some have finished it. Some, have, some, some, some are even wondering why you are still wasting time. And then that's making you to panic. Today, my word for you is fear not. You will surely arrive. That which you began to build, you will surely accomplish it. God will not forsake you nor leave you alone. And if it is that you are building because God has commanded you to build. I am so convinced that you will surely arrive. I'm so convinced that you will surely finish up. I'm so convinced that the, the one who caused you to start building will also use your hand to accomplish it. Say a big amen. Now, I want to talk about Genesis chapter 11. And the topic, don't forget, is the miracle or uh, the miracles of Jesus. But even in the miracles of Jesus, I always take segments, uh, take scriptures, and then try to analyze that scripture and also try to let you see what God, that God who did it for them, he can do it for you. So each time I'm preaching, I'm positioning you to tune your heart to, you know, receive miracle. Prepare that to have a tsunami of miracle. A tsunami of blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, at this very month, uh, as it has been in the Bibli biblical numerology, the number 11, everybody knows what it means. It means the number of chaos. It means the number of disintegration. It means the number of sep separation, the number of catastrophe. Uh, and that is why we read we saw uh, uh, in Genesis 11 about the building of the Tower of Babel. I'm going to go there. But we also saw that this very number is the number of revelation. In the book of Genesis, the 11th child of Jacob 
who was called Joseph, was receiving revelation. He received revelation that brought him to enmity, even with his own siblings, until they cast him out and they threw him to the pit, and from that pit to prison, and from prison to palace, or to Potiphar's place, and from Potiphar's place to, to, to prison again, and then to palace. You see, God made him to go through all of these processes, but at the end of the day, while even he was in the prison, he was endowed with revelation. So this very number is known as the number of revelation. So in case you are someone out there, you've not been receiving revelation since the past months, in this very month, please check out your dreams. Please check out when you finish praying, the visions that God is going to give to you. Check out the things that God will be showing you. They will be very meaningful and they will be very prophetic and you cannot afford to wake up this this particular month and say I didn't dream anything mm -mm. God visits people even through dream so be very careful the dreams that God gonna give you this very very season and treasure them fast about them pray about them and walk with them in Jesus name so it is a month that is very loaded if others are having chaos you and me will not have chaos. If others are having disintegration and it's a time of separation, well, I would recommend that the things that are bad begin to separate from us, not the good ones, but the bad things will separate so that we can be exactly who God wants us to be. If you are listening to this broadcast and God is touching you, to support what we are doing because we are looking for people who will help us to build up. I command that you call us on 023-374-160 or go to our website. You will support us through finance, support us through your encouragement, support us so that we can get or we can build up this network so that it can continue to serve the kingdom. Hallelujah. I want to take my scripture this evening from Genesis 11 from verse 1 and I read, at first, the people of the whole world had only the language and used the same words. As they wandered about in the east, they came to a plain in Babylonia and settled there. They said to one another, Come out, let's make bricks and bake them hard. So they had bricks to build with and tar to hold them together. They said, now let's build a city with a tower that reaches the sky so that we can make a name for ourselves and not be scattered all over the earth. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which they had built. And he said, now then, these are all one people and they speak one language. This is just the beginning of what they are going to do. Soon they will be able to do anything they want. Let us go down and mix up their languages so that mix up their language, I beg your pardon, so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them all over the earth and stopped building. They stopped building the city. The city was called Babylon because there the Lord mixed up the language of all the people. And from there, he scattered them all over the earth. The theme of this miracles of Jesus tonight has to do with what are you building? What are you building? I want you, if somebody is seated next to you, I want you to ask that person, what are you building? And if nobody is there with you, please, I want you to take this hour very serious. And do an examination, inventory of your life since January till now. What are you building? What have you been spending your time to build? What have you achieved since this year began till now? Because if you can take a personal inventory and then you are able to see the ups and downs or you are able to see that what you have been toiling and building is not substantial. It is not something adequate. It is not something that is profit yielding. It is not something benefiting the kingdom of God. It is not something that is to the glory of God. I believe if you will take that examination and examine yourself thoroughly, you wouldn't mind if God will bring uh, if God will, if God would bring conviction to you, 
And you wouldn't also mind if a preacher man or preacher woman out there will be preaching and it hits you direct. You wouldn't say somebody have gossiped about me to this preacher man or woman. But rather you would take it because you have examined yourself and you've seen it in the mirror of the word of the Lord. The Holy Spirit must have brought conviction to you. And then you see it that indeed you've not really been able to build. Or you've not been building that which is qualitative. Or that which is adding to the kingdom. I am here to let you know. By inspiration of the word of the living God. That many of you are building things that are not tangible. You are building that which does not glorify God. You are building to your own name. You are building to your own fame. You are building because you want to be a superstar. You are building because you want to appease people or you want to please people. You are building because you want to compete with your peers and you want to be, register yourself strong among your peer groups. Well, if you are building with this motive, I want to submit to you that you will have no profit at the end. I want to submit to you that it will be of no benefit because that which you are building, spending all your time doing, will not stand the test of time. Because in everything that we build in life, there's going to be a time of judgment where God will surely come down. He is seeing what we are doing. The Bible tells us in the scripture we've just read in Genesis 11, these people gathered. They said we want to build. They began to build and they forgot that when they said, let us build that which will reach to heaven and be like God. They forgot that when they said that, that God was listening to them. They forgot that when they said they were building so that they can make a name, I beg your pardon. They were building and they had inner, inner, inner fear within them. They said, so that we would not be scattered. They forgot that God was watching them. They forgot that God heard them. They forgot that God sees everything that is happening under the sun. They said, let us build so that we will not be scattered. Let us build so that we can make a name. Uh, it does that mean something to somebody out there. Something you are building could be that you just want to make a name. And some of you, you are building because you just want a fence and, and, a, and a protection just around you because you, you, you are afraid of losing your, your, your friends. You are afraid of losing those who have come close to you. So you build all all amount of protection just to guide them, just to hold them. Even when God is saying to you, this is not beneficial, you still want to hold those things which are not beneficial. But be careful. Be very, very careful because nothing is hidden under the sun. There is nothing that God does not see. The Bible said God came down. God saw what they were building. God made decision. He said, let us go and confuse these people. Since they were already afraid, and they were already afraid that lest they scatter, God said, let's go and confuse them and let us scatter them. They scattered. That which they were afraid about eventually came upon them. So if you are building today and you are afraid because you don't want to be scattered. You've already pronounced it out of your own lips. You are building because you are afraid of losing something. You've already opened your mouth to say it out of your... And that thought is what is residing inside your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Anything that you put in your heart is what is going to come out one day. The motive you have hidden in your heart is what is going to come out one day. Many people are seated in the house of the Lord. They hear the word of the Lord. They stay and sing the holy holy songs and read the holy Bible. But what they, what they speak out of their mouth is only full of fear. 
It's only full of enviness. It's only full of contention. It doesn't just represent God anyhow. It doesn't show the traces of God in them. And those things that they, they are afraid about, which is making them to build their own super, super kingdom. They build their own to stardom. Whatever it is that is making them build that is going to be taken away from them. That thing that they are afraid about is going to be taken away. I am so sick and tired of my co-laborers in the divine yard who will not build upon a solid rock, but they are building based on the foundations of other people. Other people raise people, train other people, and just a little mistake that will cause them to leave that church and go to another place, they quickly grab them. They don't even say, let us restore these people back from where they have been built. They don't even say, let us Call this pastor and call this sheep that have run away so that we can reconcile so there will be peace in the kingdom. What they do is they just grab people they didn't raise and then they begin to build on a foundation that is not solid. They, they, are, they, are, they, they are targeting just to build and build and build and they are afraid of bringing unity or confronting the other or, or, or discussing peace with the other pastor because they don't want to lose that church member, that church member who have left one church and come to the other church. They don't want to lose it. Their population must grow at all costs. But listen to me and hear me and hear me clearly. As a servant of Jehovah who read the same Bible you are reading, who worship the same God you are worshiping, God can never be mocked. Whatever you have stolen from somebody will be taken away one day back from you. Whatever you have kidnapped and you have held it to yourself and you have coveted it. Did you not hear what the Bible say? Thou shall not covet another one's property. Mm. Including church members, including other people's wives, including other people's businesses. People enter business with you, you quickly cheat them, and then you change your address, they can't reach you anymore, you, you change your, 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 your email, they can't reach you anymore, just because you have grabbed what you wanted from them, and then you change those identities, and you fear that they will not know, or God will not trap you out one day. Don't forget, that shadow is going to haunt you all the days of your life, and somehow along the line, you're going to lose whatever you have gotten out of ill motive. You you will lose it. So why don't you be wise and build that which is solid, that which is real, not counterfeit, not something that is based on fraudulence. Why don't you build up that which is real so that, so that when God looked down from heaven, he will see that you didn't take somebody's husband. He will see that you didn't snatch somebody's friend. He will see that you have not taken a sheep from somebody's church and then, and, 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 you know, black girl, you know, blessed unnecessary title upon that person just because you want to retain him. God will see that you raised that people. God will see that you are doing that which is right. Oh, it's not time, beloved ones, that we fear God who is omnipotent and omniscient and stop fearing man. Is it not time that we know that every hidden walk and everything we are building out there is being supervised? Heaven sees it. Even when men are sleeping, heaven is still early awake. Even when people have gone, but have, 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 got, have gone to bed, heaven is awake. Heaven does not sleep. God doesn't sleep, neither does he slumber. If we come to the realization, if we come to know and to know beyond all knowing that God can never be mocked, we shall be careful of what we build. So while they began to build and their motives were not right, God scattered them. This is a lesson to anybody out there that is wicked. Anyone that refuses to build according to the principles of the doctrine of the Bible, you will surely be scattered. Or anyone who is building and you are not building according to what God has stipulated. And you are building in your own way to satisfy or gratify yourself. You will surely lose that which you are building. Ah, this is the reason why many women have been wrecked up. And many women are passing through frustration. Because when they ought to be in church and to devote themselves and do better things in the kingdom of God, they were building, they were using it and lavishing on their boyfriend and lavishing it on their friend and, and, and cooking and, 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 and doing all of those things for just a man. It's good for you to serve, but serve the one that is your real man. 
What, what, what would you profit you that the time you would have used to bring that guy to the church? You, you allow him to take you to a party. You allow him to take you to a dinner. Or you allow him to take you to, to go out and walk around. You go and look at the sea as if you've never seen sea before. Or you go and walk in the city where you're supposed to be in the house of God. So when you have taken that opportunity which you should, you should have used to bring this person closer to God and you are rather allowed him to lure you to the world than for you to lure him into the kingdom of God. You see what happens? At the end of the day, while he's wandering around in the street with you, he will see another better girl. He will see the one even that have a better shape, that is even more beautiful, that even have better color, that have more hair, that have more nails and more eyelashes and he's going to go after that one. And then you have built on a wasted relationship. And that's the time some of you begin to come back to the kingdom and then begin to cry for the pastor man or pastor woman to begin to pray again. Is it not time we become wise? Hallelujah! It is time that we become wise to build that which is useful. It is time we become wise and build that which is tangible. Hallelujah. As we embark in building, there are certain things I will want you to consider. Hallelujah. I will want you to consider what, since you have been building this whole year, what have you been able to achieve? Secondly, what you are building, is it tangible? Is it tangible? Is it durable? Is the strength you have invested comparable with the work that has been built. Because sometimes we spend too much time. But when we come at the end to see what we have built, we can't, see, we can't really make, make out what it is. It is not visible. What you are building, is it durable? If you can answer these questions clearly, then you will walk at a path of truth and God will surely give you revelation that will help you to end up the year properly. But if you are not able to analyze these questions and answer them correctly, what is going to happen is that even as you continue to ask these questions, you will begin to panic because you will see you, the Holy Spirit will convict you on the areas you are building which are not proper. Hallelujah. And when he convicts you, go on your knees and pray. It is time that we build upon the right things. It is time that we build upon the things that are tangible. It is right that we build that which will please God and stop pleasing ourselves. It is time we build that which is lasting and not something temporary. It is time we determine to build that which will please God. Can I hear a very big amen? Hallelujah. I'm sure I'm reaching somebody. And if you are being taught as I'm preaching, please go on the line and pick up your phone and give us a call on 0233-74160. Remember, this is Majesty Christian Television Network bringing this world live unto you. What are you building? Now, I've come to realize that there are two types of builders in the kingdom. There are two types of builders. I don't know which category you belong. But if you happen to find yourself in the latter, oh my God, change. There are those who are deep builders or solid builders. Even when they come to church, you see that they are able to go deeper and deeper and deeper in the word of the Lord. They are able to practice what the word says. They are able to concentrate when they come. They want to do something that will be beneficial to the kingdom of God. They are looking for new members to bring into the house of God. They want to just add strength. They want to add money. They want to add just new names to that church that they have joined. There are builders in the kingdom who, 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 who build on issues, things that are very solid. These are people who, who go out of their own way to, to do things in the kingdom. These are people who pay visit to other believers. They are able to look 
around and know when somebody have not come to church and they are looking for a way to support that sister or that brother who have not come to church. Are you hearing me, somebody? So these are the builders that God wants. And if you are a solid builder or you are a deep builder, you will surely, surely attract the blessings of God. You will surely, surely be be joyful. You will, 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 you will please heaven. God will be well pleased with you because you are not building unto yourself, but you are building according to the principles of the kingdom. Now, let me tell you what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 48. He said, that person will be like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid a foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not check it, for it was founded upon a rock. You see, these sort of believers and these sort of builders are very rare to find in this end time. They are very rare to find in our, our community. They are very, very rare to find. Why? Because people are no longer ready ready to invest in building. They, don't, they are not even investing in relationship. They can't even build that which is tangible. Let me tell you one thing. When you are a person who is not committed to building that which is very visible and that which is very deep and that which is very rooted, you won't be uprooted. That is the reason why we have broken down people in the kingdom of God. We have people who can cast out demons. We have people who cannot heal the sick. We have people who go from one church to another because they are not gathering any root. When they come here and there's something, a little thing happens, they quickly uproot themselves and they go to another place. They are not rooted. They are not rooted. And, and this sort of people, this sort of people who are not rooted can never Please, God. Those who are rooted, those who are rooted and they are building in a very strong foundation, what happens is that they are rooted because they have heard the word. They are rooted because they follow the word. They are rooted because they study the word of the Lord today in our, in our kingdom and in our community. We have believers who come to church even without Bible. They can, have, they can afford to buy the latest, the latest in town when it comes to fashion, but ask them, please, check their Bible and see. We have believers who are not ready to visit the house, to come to the house of God with a good Bible. You said, no, when you invest in the things of God, you invest in a good Bible that you will be able to understand the word of the Lord. We have believers today who come to the house of God. They can't even make note because everything is very easy and good at time. Technology have made it now that even when you come with our Bible, it's just showing on the screen. You see, you come to church, it is all organized. So we put it on the screen for you. You can see all the scripture. But how about when you go home? How about when you go home? Child of God, please sit up. The reason why you'll be failing, the reason why you cannot gather and you cannot see tangibility in what you are building is because you've not allowed God to build you up. If you will, if you will get to the level of, 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 of praying and studying the word of the Lord, there is no amount of wind of temptation that will blow, that will blow you out of the kingdom. Today, God is looking for solid builders. God is looking for those who will be hearers and doers of the word. As the Bible said in the book of Luke 6, 47. God doesn't just want you to hear the word. He wants you to practice what you hear. And the only way you can practice what you hear is to do it. When you do it, you will be rooted. When you do it, like for instance, he talks about forgiveness. And yet, there are still thousands of people you have locked up in your heart. You can't forgive them. If you do not practice one, you cannot go to two. If you do not practice to forgive, how would you hear from God? So God is requiring, it is mandatory that we hear and at the same time we do so that we can build that which is solid. Can I hear a big amen? There are others who are shallow builders. These are the ten second categories of builders in the kingdom. And sometimes also in relationship. When I compare this to relationship, when I bring it to relationship, 
The reason why many people are single today is because they do not want to build. When they see marriages that are going forward, they envy those marriages. They, want, they love that man, they love that woman. But do you know what they have invested in that relationship? If you are not committed to building up, even your relationship, you wouldn't be committed to building up the things of God. I tell you, I've seen it. You know, I was a spinster before. I've seen it from many spinsters who have left one man to another man to another man to another man. And what was the reason why you were living from one man to another man to another man? It's because of intolerance. So they come to church, they are still intolerant because no amount of the word of the Lord hits them and they are able to change. So immediately that word that will change them is coming, they quickly move away. And they, they start another relationship and begin to build down the line 10 years, 9 years, they check out again and they go to another relationship. The same thing with men who cannot build. If you cannot build up a relationship, you cannot build up the house of God. If you cannot be built up, you will remain a shallow believer. You will remain a shallow person who will always be having disappointments upon disappointments. Today, please, I want you to examine yourself. Before this year ends up, what have you been building? Why is it that your relationship cannot tarry? Why can, can what, 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 what is, why is it that you are still single? Why is it that you cannot go forward in life? The answer could be found on the things you are building. And if indeed you are not building that which is tangible, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ whom I serve, that you turn and begin to build that which is tangible. Everyone that builds or builds that which is shallow, when the wind comes, it's going to blow it off. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 6 from verse 49, it says, He that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. That is talking about the wreckage that you will have because you don't want to build tangibly. The, the, the hurt, the pain that you will incur because you're some, of, some of you, you are like gold diggers. You don't like to build up a relationship. When you see a single man who is capable to take care of you just because he doesn't have any flashy car, you, you quickly check out because, because you're a gold digger. You want a ready man, you see? But when those people will really hurt you, they will hurt you real big time. And then your pain will be so great. Today, in the name of Jesus, I want you to re-examine what you are building. These people, this category of people or builders who are building in a very shallow manner, they are building that way because they are not ready to abide in the principles of the kingdom. They are hearing the word of the Lord, but they are not doers of it. But 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10b, he say, let every man take heed how he built it upon. He said, be careful how you build. Tell somebody around you, be careful how you build. Look into somebody's eyes and say, be careful how you build. There are certain things you must consider when you are building. Build according to the grace made available to you. There are so many people who want to build, but they just want to build to please other people. They build because they just want to make a name. They build, they want to imitate somebody they have seen in, 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 in Korea or somebody they have seen in America. Build according to the grace that is in your life. According to the grace that God has given unto you. Because if you step out of the boundary of grace and you want to build something else, you will surely fail. There are people who are just building because they want to imitate other people. Meanwhile, what you want to build, God did not commission you to do it. Do you remember one time when David wanted to build a temple? He wanted to build a temple for the Lord. God said that idea is good. But somehow along the line, the word of the Lord came and God told David, I appreciate what you want to do. But you know, you are not the one that's going to do this temple for me. And you are not the one to build it up. Your son Solomon will be the one to build it. Why? Because your hand is bloody. God said it the way it was. 
And if he had gone ahead to do it his own way, he would step out of the place of grace. And then it would not be successful. Build according to the grace made available unto you. Hallelujah. We must build on the existing biblical foundation, which is in Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So you do not need to build something which is artificial. If you want to build something for the kingdom, build it according to the principles of Christ. For he cannot contradict himself. If you build upon any other foundation, you will crash. Many people, this is the reason why many of our, 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 what do you call them, celebrities, this is the reason why many of them, recently many of them have been dying. Because, you know, when the Lord made them, when God have taken them to that place of honor, instead of them to use that honor and glorify God, they began to use that honor for themselves. They feel they have built up name, built up name, built up name because they have, they have hit some certain millions. But after that, they are not alive to eat it. So would, I, would you consider that a blessing? May the Lord give you grace today. May the Lord give you the ability to build on the wrong, right foundation. May you stop building on a very, don't, I mean, don't be equally yoked with the devil. If you are a child of God, build on a solid foundation. Build that which is reasonable, that which is holy, that which is according to the principles of the kingdom. Don't build to make name for yourself. Hallelujah. Don't build because you want to compete with your peer groups. There are some of you who are looking at me right now. God has endowed you with very solid voice. And he, he wants you to sing. It can be that you, you won't even sing in English. You may sing in your own local language. And that word will be, that song will be, uh, you know, anointed and will achieve the purpose. But now you just want to speak. You, you want to speak like, like Apostle Helen. You want to speak like one American preacher somewhere there. Be yourself. Build upon the foundation that Christ has given unto you. Build on that and see what God will do for you. I'm going to end here for the sake of time. But I just want somebody who is out there. Who have been counting this month and counting this year. And we have reached 11 now. And then you are thinking that the year is about to end. And you cannot see what you have built. I have a message for you. message of encouragement that you don't need to give up. I want you, if only you can, you can build up your altar of prayer and build up your altar of worship and build up your altar of evangelism and build up your altar of missions and build up your altar of giving, you will see what God will do for you. The time you are investing in yourself, the money you are investing in yourself, use it, rechannel it and do things in the kingdom of God. And watch the Yahweh of Israel visiting you in your areas of need. I bless God for your life today. I thank God for the privilege you have, you, have, you have gotten to hear this word of the Lord. May the Lord bless his word that you have heard. May the Lord increase you as you have heard it. In this very month, which is a month of chaos and disintegration, as the biblical numerology have said it, let the Lord bring you into revelation because it is also a month of revelation. May God visit you tonight. May your life never be the same anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom I preach, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. Say a big amen. Once again, I'm Apostle Helen Rudokeno of Rivers of Life Bible Church. We meet every Sunday from 10 o'clock. In case you do not have church and you would want to be part of this ministry, please feel free to call us on 0626-046-432. I believe that also the email address is showing on the screen. Please use that and contact us and call us and tell us how we may help you. We will be more than willing to help you stand. God richly bless you. Bye.